Brothers and sisters, welcome to your self-improvement, the basis for community development talk show. I am your host, Brother Timothy X. And today, we're here at the South Haven Study Group, 1495 Brookhaven Drive in South Haven, Mississippi. Today, we will be discussing that great monumental book written by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad called How to Eat to Live. Now, brothers and sisters, we are Facebook Live. So log into your Facebook account and check us out. Hit that like button and that share button and let us know what you think about our show. We really appreciate your support and we thank you so much for tuning in. And we would like to answer any questions that you all may have. Again, we are live. And today I have with me Brother James Muhammad, um, the student coordinator of the South Haven Study Group, and Sister Karima Muhammad and MGT at the South Haven Study Group. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking about how to eat to live. That's right. We have, right here in Memphis, the statistic says that Memphis is a booming market for dialysis clinics, where one in three people are, have diabetes and one in five have high blood pressure. They said because of the South's uh, high rates of uh, diabetes and high blood pressure, the chief cause of kidney disease. And African Americans are at an increased uh, rate. So, brothers and sisters, we're going to take a look at some of these causes today. We want to dig into this great book called How to Eat to Live and try to mine out some of the nuggets that the advice that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us way back then when he wrote this book. And so, we're going to take a look at it. We're going to use the expertise of our um, of our host today, of our people, host today, and I want to thank you all for joining in. So if you don't mind, we're going to, I won't prolong you any longer with any preliminaries. We're going to get right into our discussions, and I look forward to listening and reading your questions. So don't forget to tune in with us and send us your questions. So right now, on my first question, I'm going to start with you, Brother James. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, sir. I really appreciate it. And so I'm going to start with my first questions. This book is called How to Eat to Live. That's right. We have books one and two. How, why did these two books, How to Eat to Live, why are they so important at this time? Well, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God, but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. And we thank Allah for the most honorable lives of Muhammad, being raised up from among us and bringing us how to eat to live. And we can never thank him enough for a reminder in our midst in the Honorable Minister Lord Farrakhan. And I would like to greet my brothers and sisters out there on Facebook Live. I salam alaikum. Brothers, uh, brothers and sisters, it's very important in this day and time that we study this book, How to Eat to Live. You know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us and the minister reflects in the self-improvement, the basis for community development study act that whenever man and woman loses the ability to read Allah God's will in that which is around him, then it is incumbent upon Almighty God out of his mercy to raise up from among the people a divine messenger, a divine teacher, a divine apostle to put us back on the right path for God. You ask the question, why is how to eat a little so important in this day and time? Well, it's always important, but when we look at the statistics, I was reading an article from Time Magazine, and I just want to read the heading and the title. And it asked the question, brothers and sisters, why do black people die young? The gap in life expectancy between the races in America remains wide. The search for the cause runs from poverty to prejudice to lifestyle. Well, we have to ask the question, when God raised a messenger from among you, what is the duty of that messenger? The most important duty of their messengers is, is to change the lifestyle of the people. When you look at the condition of black people as it relates to health, you brought up dialysis clinic. When I first moved to Memphis, my first job was work, working for a dialysis clinic named Gamble, Gamble, excuse me. And as I began to see our people, you know, there was only a couple of dialysis clinics in Memphis. Mm -hmm. But 90% of the patients were black. 
Now, 20 years later, there's a dialysis clinic on every corner. You can go through the strip mall and get dialyzed or, or be put on the dialysis machine while your family is shopping. Mm. There's a whole market and wealth being made around our people going to the dialysis clinic. But what is the cause of it? Well, we thank Allah for the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that Master Farad Muhammad studied 42 years to save us, to deliver us. Well, in those 42 years, he brought us a dietary law called How to Eat to Live. Why? Let me read something from you that I got off the World Wide Web. It said, doctors urge African Americans, excuse me, Americans, excuse me, to take control of their health and well-being. Listen to what it says now. Ready for the irony. At the end of the 20th century, black Americans are discovering a huge negative effect to the emancipation of the slave. More than 100 years ago, disease such as diabetes that you mentioned, previously, previously unrecorded in blacks, are now among the leading cause of death for blacks in America. Now, you and I have a problem, and I think as we discuss the spiritual aspect of this book, the minister stated in the press conference that the black man and black woman, we are spiritually deficient, and we are mentally deficient, and we are physically deficient. Well, before we even get into the book, we have to look at the title. And See divinity in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to have a better understanding on how to eat to live. This book is important in this present day and time because it's urgent. This is your first form of medicine. Is how to eat to live. The honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that our medicine cabinet starts at home, in the kitchen, not at Walgreens, not at CVS, not at Walmart, but it starts in our kitchen. So this book is important because the, the statistics shows that black people are dying young, quicker and faster. Mm. Well, thank you so much for that. That's a uh, man. That's that's very deep. I want to elaborate on that question just a little bit, if it's okay with you. But I'm gonna go to Sister Karema, mm -hmm. and on that particular, what Brother James just stated, can we say, based on the statistics that he read? that for the most part black america has rejected that the guidance from that book absolutely looking at the condition of our people we're well, first going back to our history before our people were brought here into slavery we had a natural diet right. of fruits and vegetables and different things from the earth when we were brought into slavery we were then given that particular diet of eating pork and all of these things that are unhealthy. At that time, we didn't have a choice. At this dispensation of time, we have a choice. And our people have not listened to the guidance in either of these books. So over the years, we see more um, high blood pressure, more diabetes, as Brother James said, more people on dialysis. And if we look at the wisdom of the book, it's like we are like, Moses with you know with the wise man we just didn't see it we just kept questioning so now we're at a point where everything is being manifested so when we look at the chemicals and the cereals and uh, the cancer causing agents and all of these different things that's causing us to be so sick so ill getting all types of cancers then we go back to this book and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad this is from God himself so God promised that he would give us life more abundantly. And so he's given us this in how to eat to live. And we have definitely gone against it. He said to keep it very simple. Right. Not to eat um, the scavengers and all of these different uh, genetically modified foods and different things like that. So yeah, we have definitely not been obedient and we are suffering for our disobedience. Yes, sir. My sister, you must uh, say something very important. Yes, sir. And when we're talking about the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we have to deal with the God factor. 
You know, I, uh, I work in the field of, uh, I'm a firefighter, and I'm an EMT advance, and, and I'm on the unit. And 90% of our calls are shortness of breath, high blood pressure, diabetes. And just the other day, we had a young lady that we picked up. And we picked her up from the dialysis clinic. And she was in so much pain, and she was crying out. Because when you go through that process of being dialyzed for three hours, they are pulling fluid from your body. If they pull too fast, it causes the body to cramp. But you don't learn how to eat the little until you get sick and on a dialysis machine. They tell you what you shouldn't be eating after the fact. So as my sister was in the emergency room, we was waiting for a bed for her, she was screaming in so much pain, she was calling on Jesus. She was calling on Jesus. And in the back of my mind, I was praying for her, but I also was saying, do she know the Jesus that we know? Mm. So it takes me to the Holy Quran in Surah 3 of the Holy Quran. And listen closely as we deal with the spiritual aspect of how to eat to live. It said, and make him a messenger to the children of Israel, saying, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord that I determined for you out of dust the form of a bird. Then I breathe into it and it becomes a bird with Allah's permission. And I heal the blind and the lepers. And I bring the dead to life with Allah's permission. And I inform you of what you should eat and what you should store in your houses. Wow. So when this Christ come, the Quran is teaching that he would teach us the proper foods to eat. Well, whether you're a Christian or a Muslim, that shouldn't be foreign to you. Because we can easily pick up this book, the Bible, if you go by the Bible. There's a dietary law in the book of Leviticus. There's a dietary law in the book of Genesis. And when you're dealing with the spiritual aspect of it, the first food that God gave to Adam was a spiritual food. Thus says the Lord. He puts him in the garden, and it bears witness in the Holy Quran. That when he put him in the garden, he told him, eat of all the lawful things. But do not approach what? The tree. But right then, he was giving him a dietary law. He told him to till the garden, be fruitful, multiply. He's dealing with a dietary law, but he's dealing with it on a spiritual level. But he's also dealing with it on a physical level. But when Adam disobeyed, he set up spiritual deficiency. Spiritual deficiency leads to what? Mental deficiency. Mental deficiency leads to what? You're eating anything that you want to eat. And what was he teaching Adam? He was teaching him a purpose for everything on the planet that God gave him dominion over. So it goes back to study guide number nine, our intimate relationship with Rabbi El Amin. He said, whenever man loses the ability to read Allah, God will end that which is around him. Well, what is God telling you? I'm going to put you on the earth and I'm going to give you dominion over everything, but I want you to use it for the proper purpose. But in our deviation from God, the spiritual deficiency sets up a intellectual deficiency. So now we find ourselves following a man who tells us, well, eat cockroaches, mm. eat chocolate covered ants, eat hog moths, eat chitlins. Then you have the commercial and a very deceptive commercial. Pork, the new white meat. Mm. Now think about that. Everything on the planet has pork, I mean, excuse me, have protein, and that's the building block of life. But when we lose our ability to read Allah God's will and the purpose for everything that he put on the planet, then guess what? We start consuming food that is not good for the temple of God. Wow. So we have to begin to deal with the spiritual deficiency first before we begin to practice how to eat to live. Mm. Well, and we're talking about how to eat to live, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm here with Brother James Muhammad, student coordinator of the South Haven Study, Study Group, and Sister Karima Muhammad. Um, now, Brother James, you went into uh, the Bible and the Holy Quran as we began to discuss how to eat to live. Yes, sir. So, let me ask you this question. What do you think, in your opinion, are um, the most important aspects of this book? Well, <laughs> as I began to to step into the process. First of all, let me tell our audience, we're not perfect. And we're not trying to teach you, we're trying to share with you what we call the life-giving teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his representative, 
the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar. So we, we don't want to get beside ourselves because we're all into the process. The only difference between you and I, we're a little bit farther along in the process. I came in the process over 30, 30 years ago. My sister, the beautiful MGT here, she came into the process almost 30 years ago. So we just invite you to the process, to better help. But the most important aspect of this book, if we look, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad titled the book From God in Person. That should stop you right there. I don't care what you believe. From God in the person. Master Farah <coughs> Muhammad. By Elijah Muhammad. Messenger of Allah. How to eat to live. Now he's not taking credit for this. No more than Moses took credit for it. When he said I met with God face to face. So when you read the Old Testament. The Old Testament is dealing with the people. Who were being bondage for 400 years. And being in bondage on the Pharaoh or Trump. Or Clinton, or Obama, I'm sorry. We took on the ways of Pharaoh people. So when God raised up Moses from among the people, he gave them a law, what we call the restrictive law of God, to get us back in line or on the path of God. You can't live right and eat wrong, and you can't eat wrong and live right. So he knew he had to deal with the people of dietary law. Why? Because Pharaoh had them eating pig feet. I know y'all saying, uh, y'all, there they go on there on my pork again. Some of y'all might be eating pork right now. You better put the pork chop down now. Yes, yeah, them eating snails and crabs and rabbits and coons. So he had to give the people a dietary law as he began to give them a spiritual law at the same time. So the most important aspect, you have to see the most honorable Elijah Muhammad like you see Moses. And then you have to see divinity in yourself first now be before you see divinity in a man. He's only following the path of God. Anytime God gives us a messenger or a prophet, when we study the path of God, he gave him a dietary law. When God raised up prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, him. And he gave the heirs the restricted law. But when you read the Holy Quran, you also see a dietary law in the Holy Quran also. So the most important aspect of the, this book first, let's deal with the title first. Because if you don't believe in that man and divine revelation coming through that man, guess what? Then you want to question what he brings. For example, revelation comes before modern day science. But God allows us to study his creation to prove revelation with science. But when you live in a world now, where they take God out of science, they take him out of biology, they take him out of mathematics, they take him out of history, then they use the science now to tell you, well, we found protein in pork. <laughs> it is a new white meat. But what about thus says the Lord? So the most important aspect, I'm going to be quiet and let my sister come in on it, is the title, man. Go back and study the man who wrote the book, who the divine revelation came through, and he put it in writing. Mm. When Sister Karima, Brother James mentioned, he said the most important aspect of this book is just the title itself. Knowing where this book came from. Give me your opinion. In your opinion, what is the most important aspect of this book? I do agree with Brother James. What he said is one of the most important aspects. But in this book, How to Eat to Live, book one and book two is a healing. Mm -hmm. And so you don't need the most expensive workout equipment or the most expensive DVD. You don't need anything in particular, just a made up mind That's right. and faith that this will work. Because I know, you know, a lot of us think that we, we can't fast or, oh my God, how am I going to survive if I'm not eating three or four meals all during the day? But when we get sick, we're not eating three or four meals all during the day. No. Many times we're forced to fast, which shows that we can do it. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad in this book, he says that fasting will cure 90% of our ills. Not a pill, not a capsule, not That's alpha right. seltzer, not the doctor's opinion, <laughs> uh -oh. because many of the doctors die sooner than some of their patients and from some of the same ailments. So if God taught us that he would bring us life more abundantly, If he would give us life more abundantly, then he's giving us the instructions. In other words, this is the how and the what. The how 
is what manner, what method, and the what. What is it that we're going to be doing? We're going to leave that old slave diet alone that's killing us. And we're going to go back to the healthy food, the simple diet that's going to prolong our stomachs. Because the way that we eat, and I know that I've been guilty myself. Because it's like Brother James says, we're just a little further on in the process, but that doesn't mean that we don't backslide sometimes. And I can bear witness that when you go off of this dietary law, then you begin to see yourself gaining weight or getting ill. And then when you go back to it, okay, I'm just going to eat my one meal a day. I'm not going to snack in between. Then you notice that your ailments, they do actually decrease. So what I say to a person is if you have never tried how to eat to live, just want, try it, just one day of saying, okay, I'm not gonna eat anything. I'm gonna wait until the hours of four and six. Just give it a try because we all started somewhere. And so this book, there's a healing in this book. I just can't say that enough. There is a <laughs> healing in this book. Oh, praise God. Yeah. Brother, may I come in on something she said? Very Absolutely, important. yes. We talk about divine revelations. And people say, well, I go by my Bible. Most of them say, well, I go by my Holy Quran. I'm reminded of Jesus' words. He said, I come not to change the laws of Moses, but I came to do what? Fulfill it. Well, if you really want to understand Jesus and the process toward perfecting this vessel of God, then you have to go back and study the Old Testament and the laws of Moses. Now, he said he come that we may do greater things in his name. Reminded of, I come not to change the laws of Moses, but I came to do what? Fulfill them. Well, in the laws of Moses, there is a dietary law. Would Jesus be eating chickens? <laughs> come on now. <laughs> no, it was a sin for the prodigal son to be seen feeding the swine. Yes. Now, we all been guilty. I was raised in the South. But once you know better, you have to do better. You shouldn't have to wait for the doctor to tell you you have high blood pressure and you need to back off the pork. No, he needs to tell you to stop eating pork. When you're dealing with this medical society, when they go to medical school, school Dr. Lean said they spend one hour out of four years on diet. Wow. Think about that now. Wow. That's scary. When, now think about this. I used to have these cluster headaches. And those who know me, I would have these injections with me. And I would have to go on this medication called Verapamil. So I began to study the medication. Then I read a study of those who have migraines and clusters. They would go to the emergency room. They would get a magnesium drip. So as I began to study, I said, well, okay, maybe I'm magnesium deficient. So I began to look at my diet. They gave me a dietary law. The doctors did. No processed meat. No pork. <laughs> yeah. White sugar. And most of all, stress level. But I began to look into the medication. So if my body was deficient and stress was depleting my magnesium, then I said, well, maybe I need to put more magnesium in my body. Well, I can't put just magnesium. Magnesium needs so, some other type of mineral to digest itself or break it down. So as I began to look at my diet, and I realized everything that they give us in a pill comes from the ground. Everything in this room comes from the soil, the earth. It just changes form. So he gives us a dietary law now, and we obey the dietary law and partake of the good things or the lawful things that is prescribed to us in the Holy Quran and in the Bible. Then we can go to our God and pick our medication every day to nurture the body. We don't have to go to our medical care if we just obey God. So you either obey him and partake of the good things, the vegetation of the earth, or you obey your doctor and you have to write a prescription every week. Hmm. Do you know when you're on dialysis, you have to take approximately 40 medications a day? Think about that now. Yes. When all we had to do <clears throat> is obey God. See, deviation has a price. And we all are the children of Adam and his stewardship, and we've de deviated from the path. That's why we thank God for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad for giving us a book 
what and to with power to eat to them. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad you said that. And I want to stay right there in that vein. Uh, because and I'm a, and I'm gonna go to Sister Karima, then I wanna come back to you yes. and I wanna hear your point on this. Sister Karima, uh you you and Brother James mentioned dietary, you used the word law. Well, I want you to think about that, uh, because you know, uh, we have to obey laws, and there's a consequence for breaking the law. So, I want to ask you, can we live right and eat wrong? Because many of our, we can't, I came up out of the church myself, mm -hmm. and many of our family members who go to church on Sunday, and they praise the Lord, and then they go to a, a home to a meal of greens and beans and chitlins and whatever, can you live right and eat wrong or vice versa? Good question. Well, you can, but it won't benefit you. <laughs> <laughs> you won't live long. Right. <laughs> it's like the minister, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan has explained to us that you can eat all of the right foods, but if that mental food is not right and exact, if you're not taking in positivity, or things that give you light and life and energy, then the good food that you're eating is for not. Because if you're eating good food, but you're thinking about uh, shooting somebody or robbing a bank or something like that, that just basically, that defeats you eating that good food. Right. You have to have that spiritual food. We have to be in obedience to God and be putting the right food in our bodies in order for it to nourish us the way that it needs to nourish us. Mm. Good answer. Now, Brother James, Sister Karima addressed um, the idea of eating right, but wrong thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I want you to flip it on the other side uh, and deal with the eating wrong and trying to have right thoughts. You can do that, but what type of lifestyle do you want to live? You can eat right. And live wrong and live wrong, you can live wrong and eat right. But you want life and you want it more what? Abundantly. So the scripture teaches us when Jesus comes, we will have life and we will have it more abundantly. That means on all three levels. You want spiritual life, you want intellectual life, and you want physical life, because your physical life is gonna reflect what is on the mind. Stress is a hell of a diet, man. Stress attacks the heart muscle. Stress makes your hair fall out. Is a chemical that your body produces, man. They get got you shaking now.